welcome to Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian technician and host of the Market Buzz. Each show, we do a deep dive into different industry groups using weekly charts to see what is happening on a long time frame. Please follow me on Twitter at Schnell Investor, and you can also find my blogs at gregschnell.com as well as stockcharts.com. So we've got... Uh, uh, market continuing to run higher, so it's working through the coronavirus. We're starting to see commodities, um, I don't know if base is the right word, but stabilize maybe. And that's starting to uh, look a little bit better. So I think there's something there for us all. Um, today I want to cover off um, marijuana names. And the reason I'm going to cover that off is uh, one of the, the CEOs was on... Uh, on CNBC yesterday, and he mentioned that, you know, they, they're profitable and, and there's a lot of stuff coming out in April with the oils and the edibles and the whatever else. So anyway, it's been a while since I've done a full walkthrough. I think we saw some spike ups four or five, six weeks ago, and they're, they're starting to try and turn, but I would still say um, in general, they're, they're trending down, but there are some places of interest starting to show up. So I wanted to walk through and show those to you and just be ready. Again, we don't have to buy early, but we do need to know that they're starting to set up. And so literally that's what we're going to cover off all day today is just the marijuana names. Um, we'll, I'll just start and quickly look at the market, but then we're going to jump into the marijuana. So, uh, first of all, the equity markets are are uh, pushing up here. On the Dow, we're, we're pushing to a new high, and you can just see this breakout above here. So, this was the, uh, I'll call it, I don't know, maybe we should call it the coronavirus scare. And then uh, we started to rally out of this base here, and it hasn't been euphoric, but it's definitely climbing out of the base here, so that's good. And on a weekly chart, we're still in the big uptrend. I will say that uh, for for the market, uh, it's absorbing the the uh, coronavirus or whatever, but we're we're on the back of earnings, and yet the market just continues to push all of this bad news aside and uh, grind higher. So as long as that's uh, performing, uh, you know, we're in an uptrend. So I think, uh, you know, for me, I was starting to notice a lot of breadth issues and we still, you know, still have some here. So as an example, the Dow is up 0.76 today and the NASDAQ, which usually leads is only up 0.42, which is not quite half, but just about. Um, so anyway, I'm watching to just see um, if this breadth amounts to anything. That's that's the one area of the market that I'm I'm wondering about is as the breadth narrows into the top few names, are we going to get anywhere? So um, anyway, so far it looks pretty good. Okay, I want to shoot over and I'm going to start at the top here. And I've ranked these in order of price. Uh, but the reason I wanted to cover them off uh, today was again on the back of Afria's uh, CEO, Mr. Simon. Um, and what he mentioned um, was you know he thinks a lot of the companies will go bankrupt and whatever and i look at the charts and uh, who who would be surprised about that and then the second component of that was that there might be mergers and acquisitions and while i agree there could be mergers and acquisitions i still think that there's a lot of um wild west in the names and so it's really everybody trying to put their their best foot forward one of the things that happened uh was that the Canadian government legalized marijuana, but the provinces were were set up to to do their own retail uh, program. And so places like Alberta have lots of retail stores and they opened it up to private industry. Ontario, with 12 million people, only has something like 25 or 30 stores, which is just crazy. So, um, so some of the provinces handled it a lot better than the others. And I think from... A, uh, an industry-wide perspective, that was, you know, one of the key issues, not just that pushed the price down, but I would say that made the the overall marketing of the product weaker. The second component of this was that the U.S. state by state seems to be rolling out some sort of marijuana, and there was a big belief that it would be legalized at a federal level, and so far that isn't happening. And so, as long as we still have these two uh, competing. Um, areas where where the the Canadian and the U.S. markets aren't in sync, uh, I think we're still going to have some difficulties trying to move this forward. And one of the 
one of the uh, obvious areas for uh, marijuana was medical uh, pain relief and uh, CBD oils and and different things like that, edibles. So as we start to see that come along, um, I think one of the things we'll need to uh, focus on is the companies that are doing things differently, maybe than just recreational weed, um, or or actually finding some you know some sort of specific application or use. And it all again, it all depends on how you want to um, play the the space. I do think that there's going to be some profitable business in here, but. It definitely needed its day of reckoning, and I think it was fair to say that it's got one. Um, okay, so in, in this particular case, I've got this chart here, and and this high right here that came in at the end of October, and then we had this big thrust down. That's a pretty meaningful point on the chart, and the main reason for that is, you know, all of a sudden everybody was starting to get optimistic, and then they cranked it down, and and while it didn't meet the top of the intraday. That, that line for the closing basis seemed to work okay. And then last week we jumped above it. This week we we're making higher lows and higher highs. So the in general, the market is continuing to climb. We're about to find out how it's going to handle the intraday highs. And our, our momentum is still below zero, but at least it's rising. So on this stock, uh, GW Pharmaceuticals, what I want to see is obviously a, a push through the 200 or the 40 week moving average. I want to see the stock break above this. And also now we've got a horizontal level here at 140 we need to get through. So there's a little bit of overhead resistance right here. But in terms of um, a, a chart starting to shape up, this one is looking a little bit better. If we roll this out to a five year, one of the things we'll see is it really hasn't done anything, right? It got back to kind of a big base that it's sitting on. And now it's starting to bounce off that. I would say that's the one piece of good news. And this momentum trend that was downtrending for six or eight months is now finished and is starting to improve. So this stock, I actually, uh, I don't mind it. And I, again, if, if they can get something going in this space, that would be very good. But they did have a big four-year uptrend. The marijuana stocks topped out in October of 2018, and lots of them are still trending down. But in this particular case, it held up for much of the spring of 2019, has now pulled back to support, and looks like it's trying to move higher. Okay, um, so that's the number one on the list. The next one is Scott's Fertilizer, and this is literally just if you're going to have a whole bunch of um, facilities for growing plants and stuff, then uh, you're going to fertilize them, and there's a whole special uh, tech area of that to be done, to be handled. So uh, one of the things we see here is a big uptrend in momentum. We're currently a higher high in price and a lower high in momentum, and that can continue uh, for a while, right? All of a sudden, this keeps going, and this has to catch up and either make a same high or a higher high uh, in order to keep the uptrend going. I think I'm more interested in the line right here. Call it 110. Uh, so we had a big breakout, didn't do much after that. And now it looks like it's starting to recede already. Uh, this one is Innovative Industrial Properties, and I think they own marijuana uh, growing facilities in industrial parks and that kind of thing. Anyway, starting to turn up here, and we're testing the 40-week moving average. Still not out of the woods yet, but it's an interesting place on the chart. Again, it, in, some people think we've already got more than enough growing centers, so it'll be interesting to see how that shapes out. Here's the marijuana companies. Um, this is an ETF for betting that they go lower, and you know it trades lousy volume, but I think in general, the one thing to realize is the uptrend in, or the... Yeah, the uptrend on this ETF or the downtrend in marijuana stocks kind of took a break. This was kind of when canopy growth um, actually kind of shot up for a few days. And now it's come back and now it's testing the highs. And I think that that's the reason, one of the reasons we're looking at these today is we're starting to get back to the place where either support is formed on the lows or in this case on an inverse ETF on the highs. So here's canopy growth. And again, it, it shot up in early or mid January and has rolled back over and now we're testing the uptrend level. And this one's the largest company in the space. They had some investment from Constellation Brands. And um, so what we're watching for here is I'd like to see the momentum, the downtrend and momentum that's been going on for a while, uh, start to rotate back higher. 
I'd like to get through the 10 week moving average and obviously break this down trending channel. If the biggest stock in the space could start to do that, that might help a lot towards um, investor confidence. So that was the Canadian listing of Canopy Growth. And on the US side, it's listed as CGC. And uh, I've drawn the trend lines here differently on purpose. What you see is kind of a horizontal support and resistance layer, whatever I'd call it, 22 and a half. And we want to see it push back above that and kind of start to make a, a higher low over here and, and get climbing. So we did have some volume start to push into the stock where people actually are, are looking more interested. And I, that's pretty good. This is that big, long downtrend line I showed on the one just above here, this red line. Um, so we've had a two-year downtrend in momentum, and now what we want to start to see is that this thing starts to pop to the upside. Till Ray, this was going to be the $100 billion company, went from $20 to $300 and hasn't had a good day since. Um, just continues to wind down here, and it's down about $16, pretty much back to the IPO. And for every investor on this chart, it's been you know pretty much losing money uh, all the way through here. So still waiting for something fabulous to turn out here, but uh, that stock doesn't look ready to invest. This is a new global cannabis ETF just started in September. And again, trying to pick the bottom in the industry probably and hoping to start an upswing. Um, still declining, briefly a move higher like we saw in the other ones. And now took out the lows on this ETF. The real question is, can we start to fire up higher? That would be better. So True Leaf Cannabis, uh, what we see here, just grinding sideways from their IPO a year and a half ago and hasn't really done anything either direction. It's still below the 10 week and 40 week and hasn't really improved. Like it's only had kind of this one big blowback week and then it just keeps trot trotting sideways. So until something actually starts to look more like an uptrend, I would say this is helpful at this point, um, rising lows, but we've also got declining peaks. So it's a bit of a mixed bag, PPO right at zero saying um, no momentum either way. Green Thumb Industries, I think we can see the trend there. It's trying to find support at this $10 level. Not sure if it will, but it looks like a pretty unexciting stock to own at this point. Uh, another marijuana ETF seed. This one's a big downtrend, starting to form a bit of a wedge. You know, and again, in technical analysis, you just um, look at the chart, see what you see, and, and put it on here. So I'm not trying to make sure that my lines match on every chart, but I would say that there's a bit of a, a lower low setting up here. Uh, but in general, you can see how the trend is starting to come to a point. So maybe we finally get a kick up and out of here, and that would change something. Um, here's Kronos, uh, again, a set of, series of rising lows. If this was going to hold and start to work higher, that would be better. It followed that same thrust that Canopy Growth had a few weeks ago. Charlotte's Web Holdings, um, nothing really great here. I think the one thing that I'd be looking for is this low to hold at 833, and it's trying right now. Um, again, you know, we're in the biotech pharmaceuticals area, but you can see clearly this was a $30 stock. It's now seven. Um, most investors on this whole chart are unhappy. So um, anybody who's still in the stock is one of those people who never sells a losing stock or they actually believe there's something going on in the company. So we'll keep watching that one. I'd like to see this low hold and it finally turn up. Um, this is the HMMJ uh, marijuana um, ETF. So there's seed.to and this HMMJ. There's the inverse one I've already shown, and there's also the the global uh, POTX uh, ticker symbol for the ETF. So those are the kind of the four ETFs you want to be watching for in the industry. I'd say, you know, this one's been around the longest, this HMMJ, and it's trying to hold support here at eight dollars. The seed had a little bit of a lower low, lower low, lower low going on. And uh, Global Podex had two lows that it held, and now we broke below those. So all of them are setting up slightly different based on the components inside the ETF. But this is clearly a downtrend for the last 11 months. And, and what we're watching for now is a break to the upside. Okay, so I've covered off most of the ETFs and a few of the big names out there. Uh, we're going to take a quick break for for a, a little introduction about Dave Landry's show. And then we'll be back and we'll cover off a few more names. Okay. 
Okay, and we're back with Cure Leaf Holdings. Again, this stock IPO'd about a year and a half ago. No real price action, right? Uh, so it's trying to hold in there. Um, again, getting into what they're, what part of the marijuana industry they're in. I don't really care. I actually just want to know that they're in the industry and how their stock is performing. Currently, we're below both 10-week and, and 40-week. So this is the 10-week. This is the 40-week moving average. Haven't been able to really kind of get it going yet. Momentum is still below zero. If this was to start to rise above zero, I'd be somewhat interested. That would make it a little bit better. I'm impressed it hasn't totally collapsed here because it literally IPO'd um, the week that the stock market topped in the, or the marijuana names um, topped. And that was the week that um, Weed Wednesday in Canada was October 18th or 17th, something like that. So this literally IPO'd right with the um, Weed Wednesday and hasn't done much since. FSD Pharma, that looks like a downtrend to me. It is making a series of rising lows, so that's a little bit better, but the chart in general doesn't look investable. But this thing, um, they must have done a split. Yeah, they did a big split in here, one for 20. Uh, so what was a, a $20 stock or a $10 stock a long time ago has collapsed to nothing. And by uh, doing the the conversion, all of a sudden now, um, it's still got a reasonable price target, a reasonable price on it of five bucks, but quite frankly, ugly. Uh, Cresco Labs IPO'd back here pretty much at the same level. Um, again, went through the mountain where all of a sudden, you know, perhaps it's going to work out. Once it started to break through the 10 week, it's been pretty much downhill. And it was starting to build a, a bit of a price action base here. Let's call it for four or five months. So the selling seems to be done. The real question is, can it hold the IPO lows and start to turn higher? Corbis Pharmaceuticals. I don't like the sideways trend on here. We haven't gone anywhere, haven't done anything. The good news is we've broken to the upside briefly through this um, downtrending line in the 40-week moving average. We're trying to get both the moving averages here to hold. This is one of the few charts that the 10-week is above the 40-week. And what we see here is, you know, price shot above, had kind of two good weeks, and now we're retracing back to this level. So I'd say 550 is pretty important on this chart. That would be below both moving averages, but I wouldn't want to see it get much below that level. I think if it does, you got a bigger problem, and it's probably going to go back and test the $4. Afria. So what we see here, again, big downtrend, ski slope for 18 months, trying to find support down here at the base lodge, and I don't see... Um, you know, the price action's not improving enough. Look at the volume profile. Do you see anybody stepping into that stock just yet? I don't see anything that gets us to encourage. And even the week that it tried, it shot up and closed on the lows. So um, still pretty weak price action. Um, acreage holdings, this is just continuing a downtrend. Nothing really to enjoy there. And looking at Pikesis International, so this was one of the big names and it went on a big, beautiful parabolic surge like we've just seen in Tesla or something, um, Tilray, Beyond Me, whatever, all of those names. Anyway, um, went for the huge price surge. You can see it broke above $30, went to 50, so it was almost double, and then gave it all back. And it's been a declining roadshow ever since. And this week we're making new lows. So you're at five bucks, you were at 50, um, you're down 90% and no change in momentum trend yet. So um, it doesn't look like it's going to start anytime soon. Here's Afria. And again, trying to hold the the lows down here. If we click on this chart, I just want to change the, the number of years on display. And what you see was it was a beautiful stock running up, right? And then we got to Weed Wednesday um, in Canada when, when they... Uh, legalized marijuana and on that you can see we're testing double tops and all that kind of stuff typical tech technical challenge where we got to a prior price high no i didn't didn't even quite get there and all of a sudden so you look like you had a cup and handle starting to set up it failed and it's just been downhill since this is a pretty important support area you can see that if the stock breaks through this four dollar level you know where would you stop down at a dollar or something so um don't want to get too uh, invested in these names just yet because they look like they're at support. And then uh, Cardiol Therapeutics. I like this one, Cardiol Therapeutics. I like this one a little bit more. Um, big downtrend here, starting to make what we would call a bull flag, right? So you have the big 
pole. This is your flag out here. And trying to get through this downtrend area and push back to the upside, I think that would be very, very bullish. Looking at Elcana, again, stocks trading near the lows here. No real reason to start to own it just yet. Balance Growth Works. Um, this one's got an uptrend going on right in here. Maybe let's just click on that one. And, and what you see on this uptrend that I want to show you is remember how most of the other stocks have behaved where they have uh, been just grinding down and down and down. This one's been holding up nicely in the last three to four months, but look where it is relative to its 200-day moving average. It just continues to struggle here. So I really think it needs to get above 375 maybe even $4. Um, but it, you know, it's been working this range almost a, a full year here. So it got really in, excited, then it's had a pullback, tried to break out, um, pulling back again. So I'm expecting this 325 level to hold. If it doesn't hold, I think you gotta let somebody else own the stock. Okay. So uh, let's just get back into the 10 per page mode here. So here's uh, Harvest Health and Recreation. Doesn't look like anything we want to own yet. Um, Organigram. So this is one of the low, lower cost producers. And it shot up that same week with Canopy Growth and a few of the others. And uh, came back. And now it's testing these lows down here around $2. So this is the US, US listing. And then I've got the Canadian listing next down here. Um, but I think the big thing to be aware of is at least it's been spending whatever, let's call it six or eight months in this same, or sorry, three or four months in the same sort of range. Um, and, and I'll be at some very big weeks, both directions. As the volatility starts to settle down, maybe we'll find some buyers. Obviously, there are some interested parties showing up on this one week surge. And then all of those people who bought anywhere in the top half of this bar are uh, underwater again. So well, let's not get too comfortable here, but we do want to see this 200 $2 level hold, and if it could start to break back above this trend line in the 10-week moving average, it gets more interesting. I do like the fact that this big downtrend and momentum has started to change. And there, um, same story here on the Canadian side. Again, it's not starting to outperform the S&P 500, so if you're not outperforming, it's going to be hard to attract attention, but eventually a few um, early adopters will go in there and start to... Um, buy near the lows and change the shape of the chart. Uh, can't be retail, needs to be big institutional investors supporting it. So here's Neptune Technologies. And again, trying to hold this $3 level, I think that's pretty important. Um, momentum is still waning, big downtrend here since the middle of last year. Uh, Terra Ascend, yeah, not ascending, so just kind of rough. And then we're getting down into the pretty cheap stocks here, $2, uh, but this is Aurora Cannabis. And you can see, really, it's just done nothing all year. And if I was to roll out you know, to a wider view, it, um, it doesn't really help. So it's still a uh, terrible looking chart. Planet 13 Holdings IPO'd a year and a half ago, still going sideways. Nothing really to talk about there. Obviously, some investors think things are going to happen, but it's not really great. Here's Hexocorp, downtrending hard, um, trying to hold the buck 50 level. Again, I'm not giving it a whole bunch of hope. Um, Eanthus Capital, this looks like a downtrend to me from eight bucks to a buck 50, trying to build support down here for three or four months, but the momentum trend is still out of town. Aero Growth International, nice push here. So finally, a few, you know, one chart starting to turn up. It's under home improvement retailers, which I find very odd. Um, probably mislisted, but anyway, at this point, it's under consumer discretionary. And what we'd see here is finally a push above. Now we want to just see if it can start to get any sort of follow through, but that's finally one chart that might be worth looking at um, and a couple right at the very beginning. Here's Aurora Cannabis, the US listing. And again, um, down near the lows, nothing yet. So uh, as we break into this dollar level, I don't think there's a whole bunch of these names down here that are doing that great. This cannabis, uh, sativa, I, whatever, you're at the $1 level, trying to get through the 40-week moving average. At least it's continued to push up since the surge in early January. Um, not many charts have done that. Um, SNDL, Sundial, this one looks like a pretty rough IPO. Obviously, there are big hopes at $13. It's now at one. 
and can trust this one was a big name 13 dollars now one um you know back here just look at the comment here my guess is this wasn't retail sellers and so all of a sudden huge volume spike but no real price move and what that just said to me is you're trying to test the prior highs here with somebody who was interested in unloading a boatload all the way through here and then all of a sudden down it went so i'm uh, trading huge volume in through there and now nobody's showing up to buy the stock yet uh, cv sciences that doesn't look scientific to me it's straight down uh, fire and flower holdings again having trouble a lot of these companies are going to have trouble raising any sort of capital now and uh you know you're down under a, a dollar here 75 cents the green organic dutman terrible looking chart at least it's basing in here but um you know i don't think it's anything you want to touch lhs liberty health sciences this one has moved off its lows and held up at 60 cents but Harbor side, this was supposed to be a great retailer. And as you can tell, this is a pretty ugly chart from six bucks a year ago, six months ago, um, to 50 cents now. Uh, it's been tough for the owners. Uh, Lexera, that looks like a downtrend to me. Nothing really going on. Weed MD, break into new lows. Pretty sure we know what that means. Probably going lower. And here's General Cannabis Corp. Um, great name, but nothing to march behind. And then Oxley Cannabis Group, Group, what we see here is, you know, literally living in the bottom corner. I wish I had some charts that were starting to improve this Namaste technology. Went from 25 to 50 cents in one week, had another super surge. Is there really anything new going on here? It's a good question, but I think the stock is priced so lightly and the volume is so weak that I don't think you really want to touch it yet body in mind uh, what, one of the things you want is these names really need to base and have some institution come in and start to press the price and until they do that i think they can continue to drift lower um medmen this is uh, a retailer and you can just see this chart you know nine dollars to 42 cents nothing really worth holding on to cannabis pharmaceuticals this is an interesting breakout here but from 10 cents to 30 cents or 50 cents Perhaps it's doing okay, but you know it's given up the four weeks of gains it had. Uh, really, kind of needs to hold in here. If this is going to fold over, that's a problem. At least there was some volume that started to show up here. Supreme Pharmaceuticals uh, pushing lower. Nothing really helpful. Next Leaf, nothing. And Green Growth Brands. So. At I, I think I've made it pretty clear there's still not much in the space, but at least we've taken the time to go through. Um, again, if we start, if we go to the start of the list, I just want to go back to, you know, some of these bigger names, GW, um, CGC, uh, those names are the ones that we have to look for and, and watch how they behave as they start to break out. Okay, um, going back to the overall market here, we're just sitting up near the highs, nothing really going on. Let's go to the dashboard. Uh, haven't seen any real change today so we're just kind of uh dribbling sideways so no real action off the uh morning open okay uh so a couple of things i want you to remember the ralph heck and pura video is on the stock charts youtube channel that's very good um there is a new canadian technician video there that i posted about breadth um so uh, take time to check that out so thanks for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs Wednesdays and Fridays at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. You can also see the recordings on the Stock Charts TV YouTube page. Thanks for taking the time to join me. Catch you on Friday. Thanks again. Bye-bye.